Welcome, everybody, to episode 35 of Meet with Cheese Metaverse Interviews. I'm your host, LaDrapo Cheese, coming to you from the Metaverse. Today, I have two outstandingly famous guests for you. I have Delilah Napier and Lucy Powers. They are filmmakers. They are making a film involving NFTs. They are speaking at the Web3 Summit in Miami on December 30th or Dece November 30th and December 1st. Thank you so much, Delilah and Lucy, for being my guests today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We're happy to be here. Yes. Yeah, it's not often that I have two guests on an episode at the same time, but I this is outstanding that you're both able to be here and yeah. show your project. No, we're so honored to be here. We love your sunglasses. Exactly. We love we, the background. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everyone's got to have an angle. You know, people remember the glasses. They don't remember my name all the time, but they're like, hey, light up glasses guy from NFT MIC last year. Yes, yeah. that's me. So, yeah, just tell me a little bit about your background and how you ended up where you are today in the Web3 world. Totally. Totally. So, we met in college and we were both theater majors. Um, and so we started, we, we both act as well, and we were in a bunch of shows together and a bunch of classes. Um, and towards the end of school, we had to make a thesis and we decided we would make one together. Um, instead of putting on maybe a more traditional play, we were like, what if we made a film? And, um, and so we spent our entire senior year working on that together. Mm -hmm. Um, we wrote a feature film and, um, and we pretty much like just spent every hour doing that for the entire year um, and came out with Voyeur at the end of our senior year. And then, yeah, and then Voyeur did pretty well at certain um, festivals and we got like some attention from that, but then we just loved working together so much. We then made like a short film together during the pandemic. And then after we made these two films and they both won some awards and then uh, we met this uh, man that was starting an NFT company that was launching at Art Basel 2021 One. now because a year ago exactly and he's like hey like I just want you to know like I want to invite young artists down to document the launch of my new company and like I think you guys would be great and very like early on you're we like wait do you want like a documentary of your company which we were very down to do and also we didn't know that much about the NFT and metaverse space but um, they were like, no, just make it anything you want. And since what we love most is narrative films and narrative storylines, we were like, OK, what if we like started the story in New York and then our character somehow like an NFT gets involved in our life and we have to journey down to Art Basel to figure out what this is all about. And while we're there, we like learn about it. Um, there's definitely like some skepticism at first, but then they're completely like some of those seduced by the world. One of the characters still remains skeptic, but it's like kind of this fun thing of like, um, yeah, it's like kind of a fun, really fun, like foray into this new space. Mm -hmm. And that's why we kind of call it like an NFT story for the, you know, every man or every woman or every, yeah. Yeah, any exactly. Person. Cause it's like, if you know nothing about it, that's like uh, my grandparents and parents, like when I was like, oh, we're like, you know, he's starting an NFT company and they're always kind of like, oh, what? Like, and this is a great film for those people or just people also who love, like I know the space probably may like it even more than anyone is our guest, but also people that don't also love it. Exactly. They'll get a foray into it because we were like, we're not the experts on it. We're not going to be able to create like a masterpiece explanation. But what yeah. if through our own journey and figuring it out, we were able to explain it for everyone yeah. um, through this kind of like comedic character based way? Yes, I love it. I got to watch the trailer right before this interview and it is gold. Let me tell you, oh. I, this is so we need more of this. We need like 10 teams of you guys right now your own personal journey because people are like an nft what the hell is that right and then you kind of see that and yeah to be to come out ahead in any way shape or form is great financially but i think the value in this community is the community you know the people themselves it's difficult to understand what is blockchain what is an nft what is all that web two web three so mm -hmm. Having your own personal journey and perspective into that, I could already see that it's going to be amazing for the normies out there. Yeah. Which we were part of, so. Yeah. And now you're experts because you're going down to Miami, right? 
Yeah, now we're going to Web3. Well, we're excited. We, we still feel like we're super new to the world, mm-hmm. um, but that's part of what's exciting. Like, I feel like we kind of feel like our film is aspects of like both, um, like it's a new thing because it's, you know, documenting this very new world, but there's something like both Alice in Wonderlandy about it and Broad mm-hmm. City kind of combined. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. Alice in Wonderland and Broad City and Web3. Is that the name? Because that's amazing. <laughs> and we're acting, we act as ourselves in the yeah. piece as well. So I go by Lucy and Delilah. I go by Delilah because part of it is part documentary. So we thought when we were in Miami, it's going to be way easier to just be saying our actual names when we're talking to people. So when we're like filming, because we mm-hmm. filmed it very like kind of guerrilla style, um, mm-hmm. it's just going to be easier. So it's not like we're going to be lying to people about our names. Like, no, we're just Delilah and Lucy. And like when we're introducing, like, hey, like I'm Delilah. Can you want to tell me about like how you're involved in the NFT space? Like, and we can mm-hmm. just capture that soundbite on film immediately. And it's great. Yeah, there were moments in the film when we were filming last year where it was kind of like, am I acting right now? Or am yeah. I just existing in this world? And we just had our camera, man, just keep rolling. Just we were like, shoot everything. Just don't stop. So that was kind of the experience of doing it, which was super fun. Yeah. yeah. I can definitely get that from the vibe from the trailer is it's fun, it's comedic, and it's a personal journey. And I didn't know you were acting as yourselves in that, but now I can kind of see it now that we're talking a little bit here. Um, but what do you think overall of like the Web3 community, the different people that you've met in your journey so far? How would you describe like the people that are in Web3? very accepting and like welcoming community. Like it was such a gift to be able to go to Art Basel last year and just kind of be like immediately swept up in it. Um, So it's really cool that everyone is going through such different avenues too, to kind of join the world. Yeah. Yeah. That ethos is we all going to make it, you know, wag me. So I feel it. And at this point of the game, there really are no idiots in this space. You know, because it's complicated. Web3, NFTs, blockchain, that's not something easy to comprehend for an average person. And as humans, we need to have the reason to want to change, to look for something else. And I feel like all of us in Web3 who are building something, we wanted to change. We were always intelligent in the first place. And now we're just all realizing that we're building these pillars, uh, you know, for future generations, for the betterment of humanity. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah how did you get into the web3 space yourself yeah I was COVID it was two years ago and I'm a veteran so I you know have a lung condition from being in Afghanistan for a year back in 2003 Uh, but my doctor's like you cannot go anywhere we don't know how COVID's gonna affect you specifically and I'm like great I'm at home for two years, you know, and I started buying and selling cryptocurrency and NFTs. And once I started buying and selling NFTs, I'm like, oh my God, the community's great. This, I can, I have new friends through Twitter and Discord that I can't meet in real life, but it feels like we're pals. And then I started blogging about celebrity NFT drops because I thought that they would embrace the tech and want to take it forward. We're still waiting on that, but um, I'm essentially now a PR firm and I'm creating this worldwide DAO with the best and the brightest people in Web3 to decentralize a lot of industries that that need it for the betterment for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, And I think like there always will be skeptics just because it's such a new world and it like it does have... You know, when you see um, Board Ape Yacht Club, like the first thing you think is, what is this, right? Like, mm-hmm. you, you know, it's not it's not like the standard finance and the standard way of like interacting with that world. Um, but that's why I think it's fun to have like one character who's really gung ho about it and just like eager to learn and one who's skeptical. Because I feel like my dialogue can kind of be like the internal monologue of the average person like yeah. thinking about this world um, and like interacting with it. Whereas um, Delilah represents more of just like the creative um, all in kind of mentality that's like growing this space in the first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I can kind of get that from the trailer. You're like don't accept this nft okay. <laughs> you to return this yeah <laughs> so I, I it's a great dynamic for sure 
And, you know, the metaverse is, it's like a big blue ocean. Anyone can build anything they want to. All we have to do is like harness our personal skills and professional skills we've learned our entire life. And then you just do that in Web3. And that's kind of an easy way I think people will understand that. But what do you, what is the metaverse to you? You know, like, how do you describe it to people? What is your interpretation? Yeah. The metaverse, yeah, I feel like how I like right now my understanding of it, and I don't have that much experience in it, like admittedly, but it's like kind of a virtual, like a real, like a virtual reality space. And it's kind of like both like there's reality, but where fantasy is possible. So it's like um, heightened and augmented reality. And you can kind of go into different spaces. Like when you said the world, like it's a blueprint almost. And there's still stuff being like, I remember last we met like these people making a sound healing sanctuary in the metaverse and people. Yeah. And it's um someone once also described it to me as like if the the app store were like 3D and interactive. Like if the Google app store on your iPhone, you could kind of just go into anything interactively. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's definitely like a space to play, to change your avatar, to change who you can be that day and to kind of like explore and experiment. And I think like it does, that kind of doesn't really exist um, for the average. I mean, we're actors and um, creative types. So yeah. we're so lucky that we get to incorporate that kind of like freedom to explore and kind of be different characters yeah. every day. But like, um, this is kind of opening that up to everyone. And I feel like that could be a really cool outlet for people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And the metaverse to me is kind of like an ecosystem. It's augmented reality, virtual reality, gaming, lateral technologies like spatial and quantum computing. Like if you own a Tesla, you're in the metaverse, whether you believe it or not, because of all the spatial computing that's built into that vehicle. So if you're like, oh, the metaverse ain't going to be anything like, well, you're driving a Tesla, you're in it, <laughs> you know? So that's why I think it's going to be something that's going to improve humanity, move us forward, make us come together more so uh, where we can build anything we want to. So it's an exciting time to be a part of this. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And and also really cool educational tools too. Like people were describing that to us as well. Like what if instead of reading about the library of Alexandria, you can literally walk through it and see like what it was at some point and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you guys have been in a number of shows, movies, you know, what would you say like some of your favorite roles that you've played that you resonated with? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, maybe I'm biased, but our film that we made our senior year, uh, we both wrote characters for ourselves. And that was really, really fun because my character was this kind of um, like a really intense theater student who was a little bit, um, I don't want to say crazy, but she definitely was really intense. And that was something that was fun to play because it was outside of, you know, my equilibrium. So definitely like in being able to write characters for yourself and um, and then act them out and make edits and kind of live that um, through your own writing, I think has been really, really fun for me. Yeah. Yeah. I love writing. Like, yeah. And also I would say like the character I played in Boyer was sort of outside of my equilibrium in a fun way, not really. I mean, I feel like everything I play is very close to myself in some ways, but I love morphing. I feel like I'm more of a character actor in a way, just because I more I like to change a lot. I the person I play in the NFT pilot is a sort of an exaggerated version of myself in terms of her um spaciness, maybe, but um, but it's very close to me. And then um, I mean, I love playing Boyer too. It's also very just close to life that was and I once played a role where they had to black out my tooth. That was fun. <laughs> and a southern accent. And no front tooth. Um, and any Shakespeare character is always just super fun because they're so, like, such a passionate portrayal of human beings. Yeah. And, yeah. I love that that's um, an, an option to us, too. Yes, that's amazing. I got to see Voyeur. Anyone watching this, you got to go check out Voyeur. Look at the women's body of work and, you know, become a fan because I love that you're bringing perspective to the normies out there. 
you know, and it embraces yourselves as well as your personal journey into Web3. And when can we expect the show? Well, hopefully there'll be a screening in that week in Miami. Um, they're still trying to figure it out, but no matter what, we're organizing a screening later that week too. So, um, and otherwise we aren't sure yet about like a public drop, but we definitely want to be doing some screenings and maybe hopefully finding a platform for it. So it could be open to the public hopefully soon. Yeah. We're like, if open seas wants to kind of create original content, that'd be great. Yeah. We have your, we have your, um, your show. Yeah. Open sea, where are you at? Come on, help these two women out. Um, but yeah, we should collaborate on trying to get a place for your screening because I'd love to connect you with at least some of the, like the premier events, the better venues, you know, I think that'd be a good place for you to premiere it. So, yes, be, we're all, yeah. all going to make it here. Um, so as far as Miami goes, what are your big plans down there other than trying to get a place for the screening last minute, you know, like, do you have things set? Yeah. Last year, our experience was so exploratory because we had, we were new to Art Basel as, as well as being new to the NFT community. And so now um, it's been fun to kind of have like the women's web three conference to be part of. And then also like a bunch of other um, web three related events and um, just kind of meet people and explore. Yeah. Cause we have, we do, yeah, we're going to the different conferences. We've signed up, have tickets for a lot of them. We're invited to some of them and now, and then, yeah, we're also just keeping some nights open for other invitations that may appear. Exactly. Yes, that's the best thing is you can't plan too much. Otherwise, you're going to be disappointed in your schedule and like it'll hold you back from being spontaneous as well. So that's the way to do it is just schedule a couple of few things here, know what's happening and then make decisions. But I'm really looking forward to hanging out with you guys down in Miami. We'll all be at the Web3 Summit. Uh, I'm a media partner, but, you know, you guys are coming to my immersive networking pool party as well. So that's going to be a blast. And yeah. I'll set you up with all the events that I think are worthwhile. There's a mansion party Saturday night that I'm going to send you the link to as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for your time today. I can't wait for your show. It's exactly what people need to just kind of start to understand go down that Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole so mm -hmm. thank you so much Delilah and Lucy for your time today thank you no we, it was so much fun talking to you mm -hmm. all right I'll see you in Miami yeah, yeah Miami